Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Night Owl Video and today on Cult Movie Tuesdays we are talking about Piranha. Ooh, the Roger Corman cult classic series Piranha, which I just recently picked up in a thrifting haul. Um, and so we're going to be talking about this film today and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's followed me so far. I am almost to 90 followers, I know, it's crazy. It's it's just like the numbers keep climbing all every week, so it's very cool. Um, so thank you to all my new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy my content. I do movie reviews for the most part and the occasional thrifting haul, uh, DVD, Blu-ray, VHS thrifting haul. So feel free to go back on my channel and watch all my other videos. I got lots of content on there. And But anyway, today we are talking about this film, Piranha. Some of you have probably seen this film. This has been out for a long time. It came out in 1978. Yes, I was only eight years old when this movie came out. Um, but I did definitely not see it when it came out. In fact, I just saw this movie for the first time the other day. So, one of those ones, I, I don't know, I just never got around to it. I'm not, as I may have mentioned in previous videos, I'm not a super... B movie fan like my the movies I like are generally kind of more mainstream and big budget so occasionally I get the feeling I want to watch something like this but not often and I, it's just my preference I mean oh, some people love these these movies hey no 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 sweat I respect your choice um, but anyway, we're talking about this movie, Piranha, 1978, directed by Joe Dante, who also did uh, went on to do The Howling, as well as Gremlins, Part 1 and 2, probably his most notable films. Um, the executive producer on this film was Roger Corman. Um, as you can see at the top, this comes from the Roger Corman cult classic series. Um, this is, like... I think this is a horror movie, but if you look it up on the internet, it says a horror comedy, so... I, I don't know, like, I felt like it was maybe unintentionally comedic at times, but, um, I'm saying this is just, like, a straight-up horror movie. Um, you know, so, I don't know. There are funny parts in it, but are, are they meant to be funny? I'm just not too sure. But anyway, I'm going to stick with just a straight-up horror movie. This comes on the heels of, um... Jaws, which came out in 1978, three years before this, and I think they were just trying to cash in on the the, the craze of the, the killer underwater creature kind of thing, so, I don't know. Uh, this stars Brad Dillman, who was also in the, uh, the Swarm, and he was also in a movie called Bug, which I actually just picked up a couple months ago in a thrifting haul. I still haven't watched it yet, but it also stars Heather Menzies, who was in Sound of Music, Logan's Run, and the 1979 made-for-TV Captain America film. This also stars Barbara Steele from Black Sunday, as well as a... Um, Joe Dante regular Dick Miller, who is also in Gremlins 1 and 2 and The Howling, as well as Bucket of Blood. So, pretty stacked cast for that, for 1978. The synopsis is when thousands of military hybrid piranhas are accidentally released into a river um, by a children's holiday camp, the race is on to get downstream before the flesh-eating fish do. So... Yeah, there's like a military base, and there's these piranha in the tank, and these two teenagers go in, they get all eaten up, and then um, like a skip tracer is sent out to see what happened to them, discovers what happened, and the, she's going to drain the, the pool where the piranhas are in to see if she can find the remains of these people, but she inadvertently releases the piranha into the stream, and there's a summer camp just down the way, so, of course, the piranha are headed towards all the kids in the water, splashing and having a good time, and so it's this race to, you know, save the kids or whatever. Um, I guess maybe it is a bit of a comedy, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, this film was released in 1978 by New World Pictures. It was shot mostly in part in um, San Marcos, Texas. The sequel, interestingly enough, which I may have mentioned on my channel before, is Piranha 2, The Spawning. And that was, believe it or not, James Cameron's first, his directorial debut, which I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he left that production before the movie was done because um, it was not a good experience. Um, I did, do remember him saying, though, like somebody questioned him about it and he said, 
Yeah, but you can't deny that it's the best flying fish horror movie ever made or something like that. Or the, the best flying piranha movie ever made. So in the second movie, the piranha have wings. So anyway, would not recommend watching that movie, even if you're desperate for some B-movie schlock. That movie is just really, really bad. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so yeah, so actually in, going back to Jaws, this movie was actually coming out right around the su same time as Jaws 2 was coming out, the sequel to Jaws. And apparently Universal Pictures wanted to put a um, injunction on this film to stop it from being released so that Jaws 2 could make its money and then I guess they'd be okay if this came out. But Steven Spielberg actually came out um, in support of Piranha and Universal dropped their injunction. Um, so that's kind of an interesting tidbit that I did not know up until today is that Spielberg showed his uh, support for this film. Interesting. Uh, let's see um, what else. Um, sh this edition, I couldn't find a year on it, but I think this is a Shout Factory DVD, and I think um, there's the logo there. Ooh, there's a there's a piranha there too. Look at that coming to get ya. Um, this was put out, and I believe this is the edition that was put out in 2010 to coincide with the remake of this film. So there was a remake in 1995. There was a remake in 2010, and then there was a sequel to the 2010 remake in 2012, I think. I think I've only seen the 2010 one. I don't think I've seen the other ones. I'm not really interested. Again, kind of not my, my thing, but... Um, this film got mixed reviews uh, upon its release, but over the years it's become a cult classic. It currently holds a 69% on Rotten Tomatoes. Steven Spielberg went on to call it, quote, the best Jaws... The best of the Jaws ripoffs, unquote. So there you go. Um, now this, I could, I was trying to find the box office numbers. According to Wikipedia, it was made for between six hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars, and it apparently made six million dollars at the box office. But I believe on Wikipedia, there's a one of those like citations is required. Like I don't, probably not accurate. I don't know, but um, I do believe it was somewhat of a hit uh, when it came out. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard to say that, you know, the mixed reviews, I think at the time was like, Jaws was such a, uh, it's still considered one of the greatest films ever made by many. Um, and so when this came out, I think it was kind of like, what is, this is just like schlock. It's terrible. The acting's terrible, blah, blah, blah. The effects are terrible. It's just cashing in on the, the hype of Jaws, but... Um, it has since gone on to become a cult classic, and a lot of people love this film. Um, I don't love this film. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I, again, it's not really my thing. I'm not super into B-grade movies, um, especially horror ones. Um, I, I think I think it was like not terrible for what it was. The effects are definitely like really low budget. Um, maybe this is where it's like unintentionally funny, like some of the scenes where the piranhas are going through the water it actually looks really funny um it's supposed to be like scary but i think it looks really funny but i think it's an enjoyable in a ca its own campy way the acting was pretty good actually I, the the main guy in it um um bradford dillman i think his name is i actually think he was really good like as sort of your every man kind of uh you know going out into the world kind of thing fighting these bad fish um this edition, again, is the Shout Factory. There's no year on it, but I do believe this is the 2010 edition. Um, it's a it's a pretty nice edition, actually. It's only a DVD, but um, I picked this up just recently. Um, see if I can spin the movie around for you, and I'll show you the inside. There's the inside of the uh, packaging. There's the disc. This is actually a booklet that comes out, and it's got, the, of course, the classic cover art. I, I'm not going to say much about this this image. Suffice to say, the piranha is not that big. Um, not not to not to deflate, you know, maybe your expectations, but uh, not n not like, you know, I think that's more the scale there. <laughs> yes, piranhas are, are. I think they're pretty tiny fish. There's some um, kind of cool like foreign foreign posters for the film. Um, there is actually, this one has a quote on it from Steven Spielberg, but it's in a different language that I can't read. So there's a, 
maybe a, an Asian poster. That's actually pretty creepy, that poster. Kind of reminds me of the Alien poster. Um, there's, and there's some more imagery of the piranhas. That's kind of what you can expect, but they're like, they're like this big. Um, and then on the back it has some upcoming releases. Rock and Roll High School. This is from the Roger Corman collection. Humanoids from the Deep, Death Race 2000, Death Sport and Battle Truck. I actually have that one. Uh, Galaxy of Terror and Forbidden World. So, and I also have Rock and Roll High School. So yeah, so that's uh, Piranha. This is actually kind of a cool, also has, uh, I don't have many of these, but this one actually has the reversible cover art. So I believe, I don't know which one's the original. You can leave it in the comments if you know. Um, that image is pretty cool too. It's pretty scary. So yeah, as far as um, special features, this is a, a new anamorphic widescreen version. Um, has audio commentary with director Joe Dante and producer John Davidson. Behind the scenes footage, the making of Piranha featurette with new interviews with Roger Corman, Joe Dante, Dick Miller, Belinda Belaski, and many more. Bloopers and outtakes, Piranha trailer with commentary by producer John Davidson, courtesy of Trailers from Hell. Still gallery with photos and posters from around the world, behind the scenes. Still's gallery featuring photos from Phil Tippett's personal collection. That's interesting. Uh, additional scenes from the network television version, radio and TV spots, and New World trailers. So I actually haven't um, dug in on the special features. I've only watched the film. But um, again, if you really like B-grade schlock movies, I think this one's considered one of the, one of the better ones. And um, if you like underwater creatures and um stuff like that it, it's it's okay it's, I'm, I'm, again i i can't i don't want i want to be honest with my review i don't want to like you know inflate it or whatever just because it's a cult classic um so i would definitely give this like a 3.5 out of 5 fun to watch but you know don't go in with great high expectations or anything piranha what did you think of this film leave your comments below give me the thumbs up if you like this review follow my channel if you haven't already consider subscribing follow me over on instagram at night owl video and um on friday uh, i'm gonna have a thrifting video this week after this and then on friday i am reviewing this gem right here, Invaders from Mars. So stick around for this Friday when I do this review on Fright Friday right here on Night Owl Video. So let me know what you thought of Piranha. I'm curious. Uh, I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. I know, like, again, a lot of people consider this kind of like a, a cult classic. So um, I don't mean to stomp on anyone's feelings by giving it um, a 3.5 out of 5, but um, curious anyway. Uh, thank you for watching. Until next time, I will see you at the video store or the thrift store or, you know, just somewhere out and about. Um, big shout out to Backstreet Records in Fredericton, New Brunswick, which is where I picked this film up, along with a couple others, including Invaders from Mars. So hats off to them for um, continuing to provide some cool physical media for people who like to purchase those things. Anyway, until the next time, I will see you around. Take good care of yourselves and have a good day. Bye.